We bought that uh, laser engraving machine. Ooh, fancy. Yeah, I know. I can't wait for that thing to come in so I can start playing with it. Nice. I'm going to be burning dicks onto all kinds of surfaces. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everybody, and welcome back to Four Player Co-op. I am not Gladys. I am Cryptic Panther, and joining me is doing work. What's up, fuckers? No one else is here. Due to an illness, Gladys will not be joining us, and due for un and due to unforeseen technical difficulties, Uber YouTuber will not be able to make it. <laughs> Quote technical difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll call we'll call it technical difficulties. Throw some air quotes up around there. Right. Uh, so for the fourth time in a row, our name is a lie. It's, it's a two-player co-op special. Um, we're hoping to get the full crew back together to talk about E3 and EA play in our next four-player co-op. Today, we're going to cover some Battlefront 2 news and yet another game delay. So doing work, kick it off. Oh, you don't, you know, you don't get to say take it away. I don't use Baker's quotes. Well, you know, I can't, <laughs> can't, I can't go full Baker. That's right. I'm not never that hairy. Full Baker. <laughs> you never go full baker. Oh man. Uh so we're talking about Battlefront 2 here. Uh they've announced that the first gameplay live stream is coming on June 10th. Uh for those of you that have followed our podcast and Battlefield series in general, you remember that they did something very similar ahead of the Battlefield 1 launch where Stone Mountain 64 and Neebs Gaming each got a team of uh something like 20 or 30 people or something like that. This one's going to be 20. But they uh, basically just played Battlefield 1 against each other, and it looks like they're doing pretty much the same thing here. They're going to give them a map, and it looks like one assault on B. Yeah, and uh, so, they're just going to let them rock and roll. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's I think, is kicking off their, their EA Play event. I think so, is, yeah. Yeah, June 10th is the start of EA Play, so... 12.30 p.m. Pacific time, so I guess they don't expect anyone to watch, apparently. Well, Eastern there? time, that's going to be... Oh, no, that's noon, right? Yeah, yeah that's noon. Yeah, so it'll noon. be 3 p.m. Yeah. 3.30. It's on, it's, and it's on a, a Saturday, so yeah, there'll be there'll be lots of people's... Lots of people's yeah. tuning in. I, know, I, uh, uh, I'm pretty excited. I kind of want to see see how it works. I want to see what they do. It's a, they at the center of Swirling Melee, Lightsabers, Darth Maul, and Ray. so they're pretty much confirming that... Uh, New Age Star Wars are going to be included here with Ray exactly. and the whole stuff, or even uh, prequel, the, the uh, original or the the first three or whatever with Maul. Yep. So like, the biggest thing I'm looking forward to, I mean, yeah, this this first look at the place and the gameplay is going to be awesome, but um, I imagine we're going to see a little bit more campaign related stuff at E3 as well, or EA yeah. Play. I'm going to keep calling it E3, but. EA Play because it's yeah. their own little their own little world before E3. But that's one thing with with Battlefront I'm looking forward to, and I thought was and, and along with others other than the missing maps and other content for multiplayer was was no single player campaign that kind of you know lessened the value of the, of the purchase. So yeah, because um, the the first two the PS2 Battlefront games they had uh, spectacular campaigns as I remember, and especially Battlefront Two was all kinds of fun. I played the piss out of that thing. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. I mean, I'm looking forward to this event. I mean, that last uh, the Battlefield one one was was pretty entertaining and fun to watch. So uh, I'm definitely looking forward to uh, to seeing what they're what's what's going to be coming out. I mean, you know, it's going to sound good and look good. I mean, Jesus, Battlefront that was their biggest thing. It looked good and sounded good. Absolutely. So we know we know that's going to be there. But I'm interested in in seeing some actual gameplay. And then, like I said, I'll be looking okay. to see a little bit more. I don't want a lot of campaign. Info. I don't want any major spoilers, but I'd like to see a little bit more, a little bit more info laid out. Like I said, it's it 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 won't be a. I don't think it'll be a day one buy for me. I don't think. No. Not unless no. not unless they list the amount of content that's coming and it's and it's like you know pretty much what you expect from, you know, if it comes out similar to like Battlefield Four was where it came out with all the 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 full campaign and and all the maps and shit that were available. Yeah. If it came out with that much material. Then I might be leaned into to picking it up day one, but until I see, you know, some concrete info about what's coming, I I can't see me picking it up. Yeah, I think we're in the same boat here. It's definitely not a pre-order, and I'm I'm not on the day one train right now. The only the only way I'm, the only way they're gonna get me, like I said, is if at, at EA Play they say, hey, this is what we're giving you right off to the gate, 
and it's a shitload of stuff. Yeah, they and, come out yeah, with something pretty, pretty exactly. spectacular. So, I'm interested to uh, see. Hopefully, they get into some of the pause and the and the config menus and stuff where you're picking your weapons and whatnot. Because you could, much like Battlefield One, you could see when you were choosing weapons and setting up your class and stuff that it was very lackluster for the right. the previous iteration of this game. So, you know, hopefully, we'll get to see some of that stuff and. You know, maybe there'll be a little bit more robust content there. Well, I think they've learned their lesson. I think they've they got a lot of kickback. So, but... They got a lot of kickback on Battlefront and and even Battlefield One can be a lot more maps, but still, um, to this day, a lot of people are still saying it's lacking content. So, um, and like I said, I think they've learned that uh, they need quality and quantity, not just one or the other. Let's one can only <laughs> hope. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So more more game delays. Um, so last time we've talked about, I guess not last time, the time before, two podcasts ago we talked about uh, the delay of of uh, Red Dead Two going from the fall to February. Yeah. This delay this delay isn't as big uh, as a, in, in a time frame wise. It's going from the end of August because I do believe it was in near the end of August um, for. Uh, Middle Earth Shadow of War is now going to launch on October 10th. So it's still launching this year. It's just launching a couple months later than previously projected. I think it was the 25th of August. I'd have to look it up, but I do believe it was the 25th of August. That sounds right. And Who's the publisher on this game? Um, it is um, Warner Brothers. Uh, yeah, Warner Brothers, I do believe, is the publisher. Oh, Monolith. Okay, Monolith. Yeah, Monolith and... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I hope they're expecting big things because they've basically pushed it to the third quarter at this point. Might have, might have been August 22nd because that is a Tuesday. It was the 22nd or 25th. Most games are on the Tuesday, but there is the other one that's on the Friday. But yeah, yeah, the 22nd. So the, they, they all really was put out with this small little little um, release from um, the community manager at Monolith that says Middle Earth Shadow War expands gameplay. In, in in every dimension, including the massive open world, the story, the RPG systems, the personal player stories of the Nemesis system. Uh, as with Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor, Monolith is committed to delivering the highest quality experience. In order to do this, we have made a difficult decision to move our launch date to ensure Middle Earth Shadow of War will be delivered on all prom will deliver on all promises. So it says we understand that it might be disappointing to have to wait a little longer for the release and we're sorry for the delay. But working hard to make it make an amazing game, and we're excited to show more D three. So, typical, you know, kind of boiler boilerplate type of release. You know, hey, sorry, we we promised it, but we can't deliver. Like I said many times, I'd rather them do this than release a fucking broken game. Absolutely, because that was that was like you know two years ago. That was the norm. Everything that was released was fucking broken. So, <clears throat> excuse me. I said for these gaming companies to. To owe up and realize, hey, like we promised this game, but now we realize that if we release it, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a broken piece of shit. We'll, uh, <laughs> right. we'll, we'll not, we're not going to deliver a polished turd. Let's deliver a polished game. And I appreciate yeah. that as, as a gamer. Like I said, it's, uh, too many times, too many times we get a game released and it's another train wreck or we gotta wait for patch well, after patch. And so here's a, uh... Are there is there plans to release this new Call of Duty game in November? Have they has that has that information come out yet? I do believe it's November. Because I mean historically, right, November. So now you've got this game, which would have been released about a month ahead of Destiny Two, which is now going to come out after Destiny Two and ahead of the latest iteration of Call of Duty, presumably. Think right. there's any sort of strategy involved with moving this date, or do you think it's all, all for uh, for the game development itself? Hey, I don't know. Del del delaying a game is is um would be strategy though. Really? Don't think so? I don't know. Well, because because do you think that this game could pull more people off of Destiny versus Destiny pull people off of this game? Like which one's the bigger hitter? Well, yeah, I'd say Destiny's probably gonna be. We haven't got we haven't got a release date for Destiny two, have we? That's uh, September. It's September. I think so. Yeah, I'll have to uh, try. Uh, I'm just trying to pull up the Call of Duty. Sure uh... Um, 
elderly campaign renewal in action as well as declare multiplayer pre-order ahead of its November 3. November 3rd is November 3rd. Uh, COD World War Two. Yeah, That's September 8th one. is the uh, current scheduled date for Destiny 2. Yeah, but I mean, like, if they released it, they released it in the, the last, the second last week of August, and you said, what's the date for Destiny 2? September 8th. But basically, it's a Friday. A month later. Weird. Oh, three weeks later, give or yeah. Take. So I, I don't know if you would, would you really? And then they're saying this date is October. Uh, crap, there's the article. It's October tenth. Yeah, so that's gonna... gonna be about a month after. Yeah, that pushes them one month past. I mean, I could just see, you know, them sitting in the boardroom going, "Hey, if we release in August, are people gonna three say?" Three weeks later, one of the biggest games of the year. Presumably, well, yeah, it's coming out. Bigger, yeah, because it's pretty, like I me, mean, Destiny, even though, like I said, I, I, I lost, <laughs> I, the, the love the love got lost between me and Destiny, but as a game, though, when it came out, I mean, there was a lot of people playing it, and I know there's still a lot of people still playing it, it's yeah. still a pretty big popular game, so, Absolutely. and I know the hype's there for the second one, because I said, even I'm kind of interested in, in what uh, the Destiny 2 is bringing but yeah, um, I don't know. I mean, we, we we always say the same thing about leaks. Are leaks actual leaks? Are they just strategically leaked information to, to drum up, you know, hype or interest? So yeah, I mean... Yeah, and I'm not saying that that's what Mom No, no, but it's definitely, here, interesting. But it's, it's definitely interesting. It's definitely interesting. It's definitely yeah. an interesting point to consider. Just for the fact that... Because this hey, will like, give people a month to determine or, or to get tired of Destiny. I mean, a month is about as much time as you need to burn through your non PvP stuff and get to, to basically in game content. Yeah, that from for a lot of people that are but yeah, depending on your playtime. But yeah, you're looking a month, yeah. month and a half. People are usually chewing through like the main story story part of it. So yeah. So the yeah. So instead of going back and replaying stuff and doing some grinding and some PvP. Yep. Yeah. Now they've got but to I mean, offer up an alternative. Even still, wouldn't wouldn't you prefer though? Like I said, if we're looking at this as a as a as a strategy instead of a required delay, wouldn't you rather have your game out first for people to buy it first? Like that's kind of it's kind of a back and yeah. forth. Well, if they yeah. buy the game, and like I mean, like the Shadow War, it's not it's not it's not it's not like a PVP where if oh if I don't buy it day one, everybody's going to be ranked up way ahead of me, and right. I'm going to be behind the eight ball, you know, trying to get in playing against high ranked up people. Like that's your Call of Duty, and that's even like your Destiny for anyone that's heavy in the PVP. So I don't right, know. Right. I mean, if it was a multiplayer game, I could see it being a bit of a strategy, thinking hopefully people are going to be burnt out and want to play my game instead. But in that in that aspect, if it was PVP. I'd want mine at first. So right, right. It's hard to say with it being a, a basically a you know a single player story driven game. Yeah, that was yeah. just a, a thought. Uh, <laughs> interesting, <laughs> definitely. I mean, hey, it's it's worth discussing because, like I said, I can't imagine no one in the gaming world have thought of it before. Yeah, right. But we had never noticed. No one's ever come out and said, "Oh, we we promised it in uh, August, but we're going to release it in July instead." Has anyone ever done that? Yeah, right. Maybe Has I've anyone... just been watching too much House of Cards. <laughs> <laughs> And say one come and say, Oh yeah, we're gonna release it a month early. Like that never happens. That never happens. But probably for a good reason though. I'm sure it is. Alright. So now we get to talk about everybody's favorite subject oh, of this four the player. Shit on the Switch uh, this is yeah, we should we should get we a little come title. Up with like a little sound effect intro little, for the like, yeah, shit we on the it. switch. Yeah. <laughs> Time to shit on the switch. Oh, so yeah, go gosh. ahead and, and and go over this setup to get your voice chat working with your friends on oh your switch oh my gosh so and is this i guess this graphic is this this is not like an actual headset is it well i don't know it kind of looks like an actual headset well it's a headset and an adapter yeah it's this funky thing uh, well I'm, I'm trying to figure out if it's like it doesn't say nintendo anywhere on it so i guess it's not licensed i think it's, it's like a rendering or something here yeah, I don't know. Okay, I don't know how official this information is. Yeah, because it's it. Some of it's translated. Because I'm gonna, I'm gonna, as always, this is gonna be linked in the description. Because there's there's this image, and I mean, this image is it's worth yeah, everything. Yeah, it's like the it's like the best worst like murder suicide note that you've ever seen with with imagery. It's pretty crazy. It, so, and I think we talked about this a few or several podcasts ago about how 
we were apprehensive about how Nintendo was going to do game chat since they had their phone app and were you going to be able to chat with your homies on your Switch or did you have to use your phone? Well, it turns out that Nintendo is not done plunging in and out of our anuses just yet. <laughs> uh, apparently, you have to plug your headset, whatever it is, into some sort of adapter and then that adapter has to go to both your phone and your Switch if you wish to have voice chat with your friends and game audio in the same headset. Yes. Which is just fucking stupid. I don't... I mean, there's really no other way to put it. <laughs> uh, like, yeah, I mean, this is... It, I mean, we we when we first talked about the Switch back in the day, when it was still, we were still on the bottle field, we done, you know, we talked to Switch. We talked to Switch a few times, but... <clears throat> That was one of the things we were talking about. It was like, well, it says you have to use your phone to do, like, your your friends. And it's like, well, why didn't they integrate that into the Switch? And then we realized that the Switch wasn't powerful enough probably to run games and then run a back end for anything like chat and chat, like, friend list app related is my guess. Yeah. Is that's the only thing that makes any sense of why it's not integrated into the device. So I know the user base is you know for for nintendo products is is nostalgia i mean people like i don't like the older the other group but i mean nintendo i grew up on nintendo i mean that was the kind of the first you know other than an atari i mean i'm aging myself here right, right. but i mean you know I nintendo was the was it was dumb and old fuck the nintendo was a big thing i mean everyone had when it got a nintendo everyone had to get a nintendo right and i mean i had fond memories of game with my friends going over sitting around the living room like playing nintendo for hours on end instead of being outside <laughs> you know but that was the thing, like, whenever Nintendo's nostalgia, and when they announced the Switch, I was kind of interested. I'm not going to lie. I mean, uh, the Wii, I bought into the whole Wii thing. Wii U, I stayed fucking clear of. Um, because, yeah. you know, the Wii, the Wii just, just soured me on Nintendo that way. I mean, my wife has a 3DS, and she hasn't played a lot of it lately, but she used to play quite a bit. Sure, so when the sure. Switch came out, you know, the nostalgia was like, oh, man, like, you know, this is going to be a full-on console, right? This is going to be an upgraded, you know, 1080p console. And then I'm like, oh, I seen it. It's like, uh, it's, <laughs> it's never a, mind. It's, it's like a 3D like X X Down XL. syndrome iPod. You know, it's like okay. <laughs> so I, I I was optimistic until I started reading some more info, and I'm like, so like I said, the the the, the market is is nostalgia, and also for the younger players. So you get the mix of people, you know, kind of like, oh, Nintendo. I I'm a Nintendo fan whatever i want a new nintendo product i mean it's uh, i'm not gonna lie the, the console sold crazy good i mean like bravo for duping those people that bought a switch oh, but it's and it also kids too i mean it's kind of and it's kind of geared towards younger gamers as well right you know because a lot of the nintendo games aren't hardcore it's not blood guts chainsaws cutting people in half so i mean a lot of their games do tend to lean a little bit towards some of the younger crowd so in order to chat with any of your friends, you have to have a fucking cell phone. Yes, I know every kid by the age of eight has already has an iPhone 7, it seems like. But still, some parents don't buy their kids' cell phones. Some some parents restrict their use of their cell phones, etc., etc. So for them to have any friends to chat online and chat gaming, they have to make sure you're... Yeah, your switch is charged up if you're portable. Then you gotta make sure your phone is charged up. You gotta make sure you got this adapter. Make sure you got your cords. Make sure you got your headset. Jesus Christ, it'd be easier to fucking give a lobotomy to a fucking dinosaur. Crazy. This like, is an actual headset too. I'm reading through the comments on this thing, and it's gonna be released with the new Splatoon game. Yeah, because that's like their online the shooter game. Because that's the image that they use here. Is, yeah. So this is this is a, like a Nintendo product. Some oh. of this art, some of this articles got some Japanese writing on it. Some of it's translated. But can you imagine sitting somewhere and you have your Switch in your lap with a cord plugged into it, running to a device, and that device has another cord going into your pocket where your fucking phone is? Like, what do you so what as, do you do if you get like a phone call or? Oh my gosh, this is just such such a mess. So I mean, portable. Portable wise, it's not port. It's, to me, it's it's a fucking joke to be portable. Yeah. So even still, how long are the cords, right? How long are the cords on this thing? Like they're they show an image, but the cords don't look that long. The controller cables are half a meter long. Yeah, that's what it says. So that's what a, a foot and a half. Basically. How the fuck are you gonna plug that into? How are you gonna play that on your TV? 
a yeah. foot and a half long. So yeah. you plug it into your dock and you got to sit right in front of your fucking TV with your cell phone <laughs> sitting there. It'll be just there. like an NES Classic controller. Oh my God, what a... <laughs> So what they'll really do is they'll off. sell they'll sell extended the extended cords for nine ninety five a cord. Of course. You know? Yeah. Oh my God. Big. I mean, I know listening to this is it's going to be difficult, but hope if you're listening to this and you're on on YouTube, pull up the article and just look at the fucking abomination. I mean, I like how it says <clears throat> the comment. It says, "Remember all the talk by Reggie of avoiding clunky game gamer headsets on the Switch? Well, this is just ridiculous." Yeah, and that that is fucking right. I mean, there's um, yeah, there's there's like there's a link here, and it's unfortunately it's in Japanese. The Twitter well, post the imagery is, even, is enough to, the, to let yeah, you know what the kind image, of but there's even a Twitter for. post. It's in it's in Japanese, and they're, they're I'm not even gonna read the <laughs> replies because uh, I don't know. I, we gotta continue with this podcast. All I'm gonna do is laugh. This is this is a sad sad joke, Nintendo. Yeah. Yeah. Well, a... and and there is a comment a little bit down the page here that says, "To be fair, this is how." And I'm probably going to butcher this company name, but Hori H O R I expects it to be done. We haven't seen Nintendo's official actual solution to this yet. So ah, you know, it's hard to fully pass judgment, but it, it's not looking good. No, from what I'm seeing, it doesn't it's look not good. Looking good. Like I, I said, think this, in this yeah. case, they're going to sell some sort of headset that maybe is dual band Bluetooth that you can connect to two mm. Bluetooth devices. But I, is the Switch even Bluetooth? I'm not even sure that it is. Because that could be a potential word. It says here, Corey just Bluetooth announced a headset. Head, headset and adapter for the Switch to allow both in game sound and voice. It doesn't, it doesn't say if it's. It says that. They announced the headset and the adapter, so they're saying they announced this. Well, they're like, saying that whatever that company is, H-O-R-I, Hori, they have announced it. Yeah. But this isn't coming from Nintendo specifically. Yeah, I think one, of the, one of the comments that sums it up. What the fuck? Yep, basically. <laughs> yeah, do yourself a favor if you're listening to this on YouTube. I know if you're on SoundCloud... Um, the links usually aren't in the SoundCloud, and maybe I should put them in there as well. But if you're if you're on SoundCloud, jump over to the YouTube channel and pull this thing up and just take a look at this abomination because it is it is fucking hysterical. Oh man, it is madness, is what it is. Absolute oh. madness. Wow. So we're gonna we're gonna move on to um, some E3 rumors. Um, well, one anyway. If I say rumors, I should say rumor. Um, so a lot of talk that. Um, from software, and this is such a weird company name. From software, it just—it's so hard to talk about them in an article because you—you sound like you're speaking in gibberish. <laughs> but they don't Bloodborne. Everyone knows what Bloodborne is. If you don't, it's hard as fuck. Google, Google it. I never played it. I watched some gameplay, and the game was pretty badass. It was well received. A lot of people yeah, loved it's pretty it. Savage. Chris yeah, has it. yeah. So it's very hard. Yeah, it's it's like Souls level type stuff. Mm-hmm. So yeah, Bloodborne was was a big hit. People lost their shit when it was announced. And like I said, I watched some gameplay videos. The game was pretty pretty hardcore, pretty brutal. But there was a lot of talk that Bloodborne Two was going to show up at E3. Figured it was going to be a release date or launch or rumors or something along the lines of Bloodborne Two, because there was rumor on an article and I didn't talk about it last podcast because it was just a little snippet like potentially you know, Bloodborne Two at E3. And that was all was in the article. There was no other mention of the company even even acknowledging this or denying it. So I just left it alone. But there was an article and it's in it in German. But the translation is almost like stuff to post this on Reddit and put a little translation. Of the information, mm-hmm. so it's the game is called Phantom Whale, not whale as in in the ocean whale, but whale as in scream. <laughs> it's not a phantom fish, <laughs> <laughs> which would actually be a pretty badass game. You gotta hunt the phantom whale. Uh, so in the translation from the German article, it says it's an it's an ancient Aztec tribal aesthetic, and it's it's unknown if it's actual Aztec or not, but that's supposedly the style of the game. Emphasis is on a kung fu style combat. Um, there will be traditional weapons, um, and it says whoever weapons based movements are go- move sets are gone. So I'm not sure. I guess like I never played Bloodborne, Bloodborne, so I know certain weapons give you different move sets. I'm not sure exactly how that translates into gameplay from Bloodborne. I can't comment on that part. 
But it's in a set of players will customize their own fighting styles and weapon movements from any weapon. Move sets, sorry, from any weapon. So in other words, if you have one weapon, maybe you could do a certain move with only a certain weapon. But from this, it sounds like it's a more customized, more customizable um, kung fu, hand-to-hand, -hand, close quarter combat fighting styles. Um, appears to be Souls-like, which they're known for from their Bloodborne game. And it's apparently it's a collaboration between Sony Japan and From Software, i.e. it's going to be a PS4 exclusive. So it's, yeah, I mean, like I said, the, the article is in German. I don't know if anyone that listens to this wants to look at the article, but I'm going to, as per always, link in the description. But yeah, so there's some comments on, on the Reddit post where the people are, you know, seem like kind of, you know, hey, ah, awesome, a new, a new IP, right? People are always wanting new IPs. But then there's a few comments as well. You know, they're kind of looking more forward to seeing Bloodborne 2. So, like I said, it's still just rumor because there's no, been no as of, as of right now, I haven't seen any um, confirm or deny from from software. See, you can't see the damn company name. <laughs> God from, damn from it. From software. Yeah, from, <laughs> from software. I'm not stuttering, by the way. Um, <laughs> they need to name their company something different um, to make it easier to talk about them. So, yeah, so, like I said, E3 is... Um, coming up next weekend um well we're recording this on on sunday so really yeah next weekend it runs and we're talking we're gonna, I'm gonna talk about the the dates for that at the end of the podcast as well so stick around for for some information on the e3 time but yeah so that's the rumor coming up on for e3 which will be confirmed or denied within the next week or so so yeah game looks cool yeah, like I said, I, I never played the Bloodborne game, but I, I, well, it's a lot of gameplay. It was fun to watch. So I'm definitely going to see what, what uh, this Phantom Whale is going to be all about. I'm definitely interested in seeing any YP. Yeah, for sure. All right. So we're going to talk about uh, at, at an end of an era or a potential end of an era. What do you got for us? Yeah, so it looks like uh, this came off of Sony's Japanese PlayStation website, the official Japanese PlayStation website. Uh, PlayStation three production has officially ended in japan uh this article is very short uh it's like two sentences and uh, i've pretty much read them for you there uh, 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 uh page for the 500 gigabyte standard model only remaining playstation 3 model in production in japan lists shipments as ended so they're not saying that they're done producing PS3s from like a company standpoint, but they're definitely not manufacturing them anymore in Japan. Yeah, so yeah, that definitely, definitely kind of a vague statement. And you know, well, we're all done making the, in the, the PlayStation Three in Japan. Well, what about anywhere else? Is that the only place they were being manufactured? It kind of, yeah, you know, that's it, a good question. I don't know. I remember that was one of the big deals with them at launch is that the price was high, uh, due in part to production in Japan versus like Korea or. You know, one of the other uh, company, Thailand or anything like that, China even. So I don't know. Maybe they're gonna shift it to a uh, less or a more cost-effective area to be producing them, or maybe they're gonna start scaling them down. I mean, PS4's well, yeah, I mean, been out for what three, four years now, three years. 2013. So yeah. Well, it says here the PS3 first launched in 2006, and they said 10 years. So now we're you know we're almost seven. We're almost. Uh, this is 11. Yeah, 11 years. So almost a full 11 years because, I mean, we're not in November yet. So Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so 10 and a half years they've been making this console. So, yeah, not an unexpected uh, move. Yeah, no, I mean, really, I'm not you know, someone who has who switched to PS4. They want to never look back. <laughs> yeah. Not, you know, I kind of, you know, I kind of forgot about PS3 sometimes. Um, definitely uh, an RIP moment for sure, though. Yeah, I mean, like, that's an end of, end of the, you know, end of the... One of the one of the consoles of the last generation, like the you know the, the, the sale king. Like I mean, they, they end up selling more than than uh, than Xbox 360, right? Oh yeah, by yeah. like a substantial margin. Yeah, the 360 had the stranglehold for a long time, but once people learned how to how to work on that uh, cell processor, man. Took PS3, off. yeah. So yeah, there's some comments here. Like one person said down in the comments, like. Um, it says in Japan, but still active elsewhere. You know, um, probably people are saying, you know, yeah. RIP PS3, and like there's it's just kind of a really 
a really odd article just to go, hey, well, in Japan, we're not making these anymore. Well, did you ever make them anywhere else but Japan? So, it, it, like I said, I mean, and even like one of the, the sub head titles is that's a wrap. You know, in other words, they're not making PS3s anymore at all. So, in other words, if you own one or thinking even buying one to play, you know, someone's back catalog or your own back catalog of PS3 games, eventually they're going to be non existent. From, from what I understand, like, you know, from what I'm thinking, like, this sounds like it's actually, you know, kind of the actual end of PS3 production. I mean, I don't, do they still make 360s? Uh, you, know? you know, I don't know. I haven't, uh, I haven't really heard anything about that. Of You're course, I haven't my... been looking either, but... No, that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, like I said, it's just kind of odd that this article comes out. It was so much, so much, so, I shouldn't say so much, so little fanfare. This is the actual end of production. You figured to be something a little more I don't know, like a little bit more of a oh like you know, like a send off for the console. Yeah. That, and that, you know, E three is right around the corner, so who's well, to say that that you know it won't be there won't be some sort of like end of an era announcement kind of thing. It, you never know, stranger things, right? Well definitely definitely think it needs to be done if this is a true end of the PlayStation three. Yeah, there um, should definitely be some pop and circumstance. Yeah, there definitely should be say. Yeah, Absolutely. they need to they need to have a moment of silence or something, or or, uh, or something fly, on those fly the flags at the White House at half mast for a week. Yeah, something like that for sure. Man down, damn it. Yeah, PS3 <laughs> in Japan. Anyways, we can't, yeah, we, can't Japan. Con- we can't confirm worldwide, or you can only confirm Japan right now. That's right. Uh, so from the end of one era to the end of um, I know. The era- DRM and another kind of this hardware uh, taking mass casualties today. Yeah, this year, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we got yeah, we got another article coming up on that. But so this this um, this next one we're going to talk about is the game Rhyme that just came out um, last week. So anyone familiar with the game Rhyme? It was announced at E3 like two years ago as a PS4 exclusive. Um, I don't know how the dealings ever happened, but what happened with the gaming company is. They either they couldn't deliver on the game on time or what happened, but anyways, they end up buying the rights to the game back from Sony. I've never heard of that before. They bought the rights to the game back from Sony and decided to to release it multi platform. So it says the Kilowerks rhyme has been cracked in just five days, and the slowdown slash stuttering issues were due to Denvu. Den I don't even have to pronounce that. But it's the like the DRM software built into the game. So um, it said a few days ago, Tidalworks stated that it would remove the anti-tamper tech once the title has been cracked. Obviously, Tequila Works wanted to protect the title from pirates, but only after five days, Rhyme has been cracked. Uh, for what it's worth, it's the fastest game powered by Denuvu. I don't know how to pronounce that damn the anti-tamper tech. I don't tech. know either. I think you're. Pretty much close Denuvo, to Denuvo, um, yeah. the new, the anti tamper tech, which has been cracked alongside Resident Evil 7. Um, both of those were cracked in just five days, whereas Mass Effect, Andromeda, and Prey were cracked in 10. Guess that's what you get when you challenge crackers. Hey, that's, that's oh, crackers, that's racist. crackers. <laughs> that sounds racist. That's right. That's, damn it, damn it, damn it. Uh, the Keely works and uh, oh, people. DS DSOG gaming, you just you just made me sound racist. <laughs> <laughs> that's what happens when you challenge crackers. Oh Jesus, that's what happens when you challenge hackers. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, not, not we're not racist here at uh, Four Player Co-op. We hate everybody. That's right. I hate all of you equally. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so that's interesting news. Is that they their their anti tamper tech? Um, they said they'd remove it after it was cracked. Um, I, I I think I've ever really heard of a company that would say that. Oh, if you can crack our game, we'll take we'll take the anti tamper software off it. We'll basically give it away if you can if you can figure out how yeah. to how to get it for free. <laughs> we'll you, just give it to you for free. Yeah, if you can break it, we'll just give it to you for free type of right. deal. That's Surprise definitely it. definitely a bold thing. But apparently, um, the anti anti tamper tech was causing some slowdown and stuttering within the game. So yes. Yeah, so I mean, it kind of kind of benefits them in the long run that that they've removed it anyways, even for people who paid for the game um, on PS4, which I own the game on PS4. I don't have to worry about that because there's no no DRM right, yeah, there's no type of deal because it's you know, it's, it's a it's a PS4 game. So, but anyone who who did pay for it on on PC, 
um, definitely would, would benefit from them removing that uh, the anti tamper software. But I think that's the first I've ever heard of a company, you know, saying, "Hey, if you can you can crack this game, we'll remove our DRM type of deal." That's, yeah, um, that's right. that's interesting. This right. is the, this is the age we live in, folks. Yeah, right. Kyler Hitler, <laughs> software developers. Yeah, it's in some aspects. That's interesting. So yeah, I'm going to link the article because it's 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 not a lot more really to read on it on the facts that other than I think we've already stated here, but I'll link it to the link the article in the description if you want to read over it. And uh, if you want to see some gameplay, I'm going to plug my channel. If you want to see some gameplay, um, I got a couple of, a couple episodes of it up on my channel. So there you go. I'm going to plug my channel for a change. Shameless promotion. <laughs> So you covered you covered the end of the PS3. Let's let's say you cover the you I'm like covered the end. bad news today. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you go ahead with the next article we got here. So uh, anyone of you that has been playing video games for more than probably six hours probably familiar with the term Mad Cats. Uh, back in the '90s and the 2000s, they were the the source, you know, if you needed an extra controller for your N64, you got a Mad Cats, or for your Super Nintendo, you got a Mad Cats, man. And uh, I know they've moved into the PC market a little bit with some keyboards and some ice offerings, but uh, apparently they've been in trouble for a while. And uh, they have officially filed for Chapter 7 bankruptcy. Mad Cats is no more. They're, uh, yeah. yeah. They uh, and it's funny because I uh, I remember not that long ago and it mentions this in the article that they got the deal to be the official controller for the new Rock Band game and be like their global like that was it if you want a Rock Band four controller it was going to be a Mad Cats but help then help says people, last week I guess enough people didn't buy didn't buy Rock Band yeah I guess so to get uh, them back in there they were delisted from the stock exchange for an abnormally low trading price. And uh, it says today, when is this? Oh, March 31st. Wow, this is an old article. March 31st. 2017. Well, it's, only, it's only the 4th of June, so it's not that old. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, as of March 31st, they had uh, they had filed for Chapter 7 bankruptcy. And it's important to distinguish the difference between Chapter 11 and Chapter 7. Uh, many of you have heard both of those terms. In Chapter 11, it allows a company to reorganize under the supervision of the courts. So it's something that you can bounce back from. A Chapter 7 bankruptcy is literally the end. You liquidate and you pay off as much of your debt as you can, and that is it. Bad Cats is, is actually going away. Yep. Yeah, so anyone that's yeah, been in gaming for a hot minute or more definitely knows what Mad Cats is. Yeah, especially, so, especially, especially if you were the little brother or the, or the, or the friend coming over to someone's house, you were always giving the player, the player two controller was always a Mad Cats. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know they were, they were also the, to believe the company that done a lot of the, the controllers with the extra buttons, um, the turbo oh, yeah, controller, the turbo, the turbo, buttons, the turbo uh, buttons and stuff. Yeah, you know, for they the, pioneered some of the. Uh, yeah, so do yeah, all like, those things like programmable buttons. They had a weird term for it. I remember I had yeah. one for uh, Street Fighter Two Turbo on the Super Nintendo. Yeah, and you have a turbo controller, so instead of pressing the button repeatedly to do something, you just hold it down with the Absolutely. little cheat button. Yeah, it's not like it wasn't always player two that used it either. If you were on player one and you needed to you needed the turbo button for, for button mashing, it definitely came to an advantage. But yeah, Mad Cat's gone. Like yeah, chapter seven is the is the nail in the coffin. Yeah. Very, Very strange. I'm looking at I, Mad Cat's website now and it mentions nothing about bankruptcy. <laughs> they still want to try to flick the tape your damn ass. That's <laughs> it's nothing. Well, you know, I'm looking at it. Oh, yo, does Mad Cats do they own Triton? Triton, I, I guess so. so. Triton headsets because that it's listed oh, under really? products. Yeah, and I see that's I didn't wow. know that Triton headsets mm -hmm. they were a powerhouse for a long time. Right up there with uh, maybe they just sell, maybe they just like are a third party seller or a something? distributor maybe maybe i don't know like if you go to their website oh well it, it yeah their website links you to yeah it probably links, links to you their to triton okay well, yeah triton system that's what yeah i'm gonna say i'm gonna say that's triton headset that's that's a it's a pretty big yeah. bank there too yeah mad cats yeah it was kind of odd to hear this to see this post when i read that online i'm like damn i was like you wouldn't think a, a controller company like that been around for fucking ever would be 
just out of the blue like you like i don't know i guess we don't follow the my financial side of gaming to, to ever hear of any problems right. but yeah i mean it just out of the blue oh we're, we're fucking done we just we just dug a hole in the backyard and we're burying the brand it's like jesus so it's kind of strange like i said yeah that <laughs> that deal with harmonics must not have must not have panned out very well must not have panned out as well as i thought oh i know there's been other companies that have come along in the last few years that do like you know the the charging docks and 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 stuff for the the newer the newer con or oh, this generation of console they keep saying newer consoles but um current gen like i mean i know even my even my uh my ps3 well the charging dock for it was wasn't mad cats but it was one of the other um knockoff companies i know like um quite a few of the electronic stores sell like the knockoff branded controllers still and a lot of the charging docks and and stuff like that so like i said yeah i don't oh. know if mad cats just kind of got overrun by someone else it's kind of odd that i don't know they felt oh, look at this I, like so i'm digging around their website and there's a section about uh financial data and stuff like that because you know of course it's a publicly traded company so all this stuff is right. public information so he highlights of the fiscal 2017 third quarter and subsequent area and there's just this top bullet point that i'm going to read part of here Fiscal 2017 third quarter net sales decreased 71 percent. 19.1 million, driven primarily by a decrease in sales of Rock Band 4. So yeah, you might have hit the nail on the head, man. People didn't buy Rock Band and it and it dropped them, but I mean 71 percent in three mm. months. That's, that's bonkers. That's big. That's yeah. big. Yeah, that's. Bonkers. I mean, just looking at there's a whole table here. Three months ending December 31st in 2015, their net sales were $65,000 in 2016. That same three month period, their sales were $19,000. Ouch. That is bad. Yeah. How do you how do you produce anything on that kind of money? Yeah, I mean that's they've that been sales, they've been hurting for crazy. a while. Like yeah. those sales numbers are minuscule, man. Like that's. And they're like a worldwide company, not like they sell in one country or even one. Yeah, absolutely. One or two absolutely. states you can get like that. Stuff in Walmart, for God's sakes. Yeah, like in the U.S. and in North America. Ever. Yeah, in North America, how many fucking gaming stores and WalMarts and mom and pop shops are there in North America? Jesus hey, Christ! Hey. And they only sell that. The holy, they've been in dire straits for a long time. Yeah, I mean, less than a hundred thousand dollars in three months. That's oh, well, but I know myself. My charging dock for my PS4 is PlayStation. My controllers I buy are PlayStation. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't buy Mad Cats. I haven't bought a Mad Cats thing since Jesus, I don't know when. But yeah, that's that's yeah. it's. Jesus. Yeah, I think the last thing I got was like a PS3 cooling stand or something funky like that but you know if i need a solid controller or something like i'm going first party anymore because oh, yeah. i can't i don't trust them i don't trust the other yeah. stuff plus they don't they don't call always feels the same they don't you know oh yeah they remind me always... and i don't know how many of our listeners both of them ride uh motorcycles but they remind me of the difference between a victory motorcycle and like a harley davidson they both look really nice but if you get on one and you start feeling buttons and switches and pieces yeah victory's always felt Tensy was the best word I could ever come up with. Yeah. They just feel cheap, like like I'm gonna break them. Yeah, Whereas the other stuff as... feels solid. Yeah, like that's definitely the big thing, and too, like, and also with it not be, not being a first party controller, it's not always identical in size, and and you know, like the buttons aren't, you know, like you said, they don't feel quite right. Yeah. Like even the controller holding the controllers, a lot of times, they just felt a little misshapen. If you were, you know, if you definitely if you were. Certainly. If you just went over someone's head, expect the control and play, you probably wouldn't notice it. But if you were, you know, running a PS4 controller, you know, every day as a gamer, and then someone hands you this, you'd be like, "This isn't a fucking PS4 controller." Yeah, absolutely. Get this poison out of my hands. <laughs> like, yeah, watch your watch your local stores sales. Keep up on the website. There could be some deals to be had. Just yeah, if you're aware that their support may not be there on the back end. Exactly, but I mean, <laughs> most, like a, any mice keyboard type of stuff. I mean, that should last a long time and. Yeah, you know, and they do yeah. make some pretty, uh, some pretty you know. wicked mice. And uh, I didn't see them make keyboards. I didn't really look. They make keyboards. I know they make mice, anyways. I know they're listed in that. Uh, I think I was looking at there, but uh, oh, their their products. Keyboards. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I've never seen or, well, or can both. Can, I can't talk for any quality of their of their mouse keyboards and stuff. But like I said, back in the day, their their controllers and stuff were always you know they didn't fall apart in your hand. 
they weren't, you know, they weren't shit, but I mean, like, they weren't first party either. You can always tell, but, you know, so, I mean, definitely, yeah, if you're looking to pick up, you know, a charge and dock or anything else they may sell, keep an eye out because shit's going to be, shit's going to be liquidated. Right, I mean, they make a keyboard that comes with an LED touchscreen for programming. Sweet. Yeah. So it's... anyone that games on PC, that come in handy. I don't know. I know they're always looking I for... I think it's a bit much. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a bit much. I don't know. Depends on who you are, I guess. Some people yeah, like the fancy fancy so. shit with lots of lights. <laughs> All right. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna we're gonna end end the podcast with kind of two two stories kind of rolled into into one. Um as we've talked about before, most of us here at Four Player Co op um haven't played Battlefield in a while. I know don't work. You haven't played it a lot longer than the rest of us. Nope. I know Uber. Uber, I know, picked it up shortly before he even joined us, and then having a lot of playtime with it. Um, Baker and myself both have have stepped away um, with other games, taking up my time. I know Baker did go back into it. Uh, it was about a week or more ago. I know he was back in playing, and he was bragging about his KD. Um, but you know that's typical Baker. But there was uh, a Battlefield one update. Be so proud of like going three and one. <laughs> He's been here, Baker. Now I'm gonna, now I'm gonna turn yeah, on. Yeah, that 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 five and two we posted in the oh, chat. Oh boy, boys. he was drooling. Five I got two, two grenade kills. I'm a genius. You should have heard it. Oh, <laughs> we we should have, we should have. I should have saved a screenshot and I could have put it in the uh, this, in the description <laughs> for everyone to point and laugh. But I don't have it. But yeah, so there was there was the Battlefield one patch, a big one. Um, more updates, more changes. I'm going to link that in the description. We're not going to go over it because, I mean, if you're a Battlefield 1 player, you've probably already read the patch notes. But for anyone that maybe hasn't been kept up with the game or hasn't played in a while, like some of us here, they've they've yet again made more changes, um, those with fixes, some more updates um, to vehicles, to maps. They've done a lot of different, a lot of different stuff. So I'm going to link that in the description. Uh, like I said, we're not going to cover it too much. And the only last thing I want to talk about is the big thing is e3 so what is with, e3 yeah i've heard of this <laughs> heard of this so apparently if you get on the internet you can fucking watch this anywhere so you says here you can watch easy press conference live on almost every screen in your house or in your pocket so you can watch on your desktop your tablet uh, IGN's IOSO app, IGN's Android app, IGN's Apple TV app. So if you get the point, if you have any IGN app of any fucking type, you can watch E3 on it. So from your computer right down to your potato, if you can get an IGN app on it, you can watch E3. So the other thing I want to talk on is the schedule. So EA Play, which precedes um, E3, is their own event, so it's only it's an EA only event. It starts, and this is time Pacific, uh, West Coast is 11:30 uh, a.m. on Saturday, June 10th. There starts roughly. The, I guess the pre-show starts at 11:30, and the actual event starts at noon, which is that Battlefront 2, you know, that Battlefront 2 event we mentioned. Um, then actually at E3, which starts on the on Sunday the 11th, and this is kind of a different rundown of of their their schedule is. The fact that Microsoft opens the show at 2 p.m. 2 p.m. Pacific, then Bethesda, sorry Bethesda, if I can speak English, <laughs> isn't on until this is a long jump in between um, uh, press conferences. Not till 9 p.m. Pacific. Wow, that is late as shit here. I'm on. I'm on. I'm on. I'm on Atlantic time. I am four hours ahead of. Of uh, Pacific, I know you're three hours because you're Eastern. Yeah, uh, work along with along with Baker, but um, Uber's the only one on the West Coast. So yeah, that's that's fucking late. Like Jesus, why so long in between? Like that's what's really strange. And then we're kicking over to Monday, June twelfth, at ten a.m. Pacific. There's a PC gaming show. I am not quite sure what that's all about. And then I don't know. I'll scope it out. I'm definitely going to be watching everything possible on E3, as I always do. It'll be live tweeting. Um, also, um, we're not going to do any. I don't think we're we're not going to have anything going on that weekend because of E3. Uber's away, um, and the press conferences are Sunday and Monday, and we always record on the Sunday, so we're going to miss um, 
Ubisoft and we're going to miss Sony. So we're not recording next weekend. So next weekend's an off weekend for us, the weekend of E3. Yeah. Yeah, So just, yeah. If we can get something going like on a Wednesday evening or something. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if we can, if we can do something, yeah, midweek would be, would be ideal if we can, but if not. we want to have time to to digest and. Yeah. So I'm going to try to live tweet as much as I can and stuff and, and maybe I'll, I might put something of my own up on on my my YouTube channel, but nothing official from the the podcast probably until the following weekend. But um, we get into Monday after the PC gaming show is Ubisoft at 1 p.m. Pacific, and then the one that we're all waiting for is Sony's at 6 p.m. Pacific on Monday. That's gonna be a late one too. Yeah, and I got to work. I got to work Tuesday morning. I know you and me both. Man. Early, so yeah, that's gonna be. At least it's usually at seven o'clock Pacific a lot of the times, but yeah, the biggest thing I'm finding is is usually it's Microsoft, then it's usually Sony, then it's like Bethesda or Ubisoft in the same day, so they're spreading like and like the big the big pause between Microsoft and Bethesda is really strange for press conferences. I don't know why Bethesda wants to be on so goddamn late in the day. What about us in the, on the I, East Coast, uh, you bastard? That- I think that part of this kooky schedule in this is the fact that they they had to with EA not being there. They gotta oh, yeah. they gotta fill out that time a little bit. But I prefer. And they also that. don't say when Devolver is gonna be involved. Yeah, that's in there still as well. yeah that's yeah that's still this is to be announced. And then the last the last press conference listed is Nintendo on Tuesday at 9 a.m. Pacific. So unfortunately, I'm gonna be at work during that um, press yeah, conference. So am I. So I I might be able to tune in and watch bits and pieces of it, but I won't be really I won't be live tweeting any of it for sure. Uh, I'm at work, so yeah. I mean, I, I'll be I might be on. Oh, you know, I might be able to live tweet some stuff. I might retweet some shit maybe because I'll probably be, probably be scrolling through a little bit of Twitter maybe and and um and some Reddit comments maybe for some of the stuff on Nintendo. But yeah, it being it being the the last one and, and on a Tuesday is kind of a really strange. Really strange time for that. So yeah, I'm, there's also a link for uh, UK Times um, in the article. So I'm gonna link that in the description. And so Australia the Times as well. Oh yeah, and Australia Times there as well. Yes. So any of our listeners from that side of the world be able to find the Times listed there. If there's any of you, if there is any of you, just fucking comment. Right. How about that? I didn't want you to look and see if anyone posted. The, no, uh, no one. No one did. I checked. Yeah, no one. Video no game one... series or nothing. Yeah, no one posted anything. Man, you guys are dicks. Yeah. Both Chat of, it up. Talking to both of our listeners. You guys yes. Are yeah, the two of you. <laughs> Baker and Uber. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you two didn't comment, you bastard. Fucking lazy. Yeah, so if anyone is, anyone that does feel like commenting, um, do it. I do it on the YouTube channel. Do it on mine or the, the Four Player Co-op one because this video gets posted on both. Um I do believe you can leave comments on SoundCloud if you do believe. I, I pop in and usually midweek to check to see if anyone's watched it. Um, I know there's a few people following us on SoundCloud. Uh, you hit us on Twitter, the four-player co-op Twitter, and all our personal Twitters are listed in the description. So feel free to fire us a comment there if you want to. Tell us what at E3 you're waiting for. Tell us what press conference, and tell us maybe what game or game series you're hoping to see more info on. Because I tell you right off the bat, I am basically Sony's. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it, I'm a Sony fanboy at this point. I might as well just come out of the closet and say it. Um, <laughs> so any, anything Sony, I'm, I'm at Ubisoft too. I'm, I'm excited to see some Ubisoft stuff as well. Um, Microsoft, I'm just going to see what kind of train wreck Scorpio is going to be. <laughs> I guess. I'm going to watch it's, Bethesda it's, too. It's all I'm banking on. Uh, I'm interested, a little bit interested in Bethesda, but not not as much as I am in Ubisoft and Sony, yeah. but I'm definitely. Uh, Bethesda looking... is uh, uh, Elder Scrolls, right? Yeah, true. I imagine there's going to be something, but I'm I'm looking forward to with Sony. I'm looking forward to uh, to definitely uh, some Days Gone. A release date for Days Gone would be nice. And yeah. we're we're yeah, gonna some, some Red Dead news would be cool. Yeah, Red Dead news. We know we're we know we're getting um, some. Shadow of War news, whether I don't know which press conference they're going to be at, but I know we're getting some news there and that. And also, um, Last of Us, Last of Us Part 2. Yeah. I'm figuring yeah. that's I'm figuring that's going to be the show opener or closer for Sony, along with, uh, yeah, and God of oh, War. We're going to see know, some God of War, too. Another cryptic, like, 
dumb short ass conclusional short. fucking Death Stranded video with oh fuck you know yeah. they might have like Christian Bale or somebody at this fucking time. It's, it's a different star every year, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we had Norman Reedus, and I feel like it was funny. How everyone said that the fat guy was John Goodman. Oh my gosh. I, I love that. I was like, oh, we get Norman Reedus and John Goodman. Is that I Chris Farley? Love. How do they even know each other? Yeah, shit. They went Chris Farley back from the grave just to start in Death Stranding. Maybe it'll be Chandler Biggs and we can watch him. Nerd. <laughs> Nerd. Oh, shit. That kid has stupid hair. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's gonna be. It's, I just can't wait. I mean, E3 is 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 definitely yeah. one of the, yeah, the it's biggest. Yeah, like World Series for gamers, right? I exactly. I'm I'm excited. So yeah. So anyone that's uh, listening wants to comment, tell us what you're looking forward to. Tell us what you want to see. And uh, like I said, tell us something you dicks. Yeah. You wouldn't tell us to fuck off. We don't care. I mean, yeah, I'm good with that interaction. We're, we're, we got we got from. we got thick skin. Uber's not here. None of us yeah, are gonna right. cry. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So it's like I said, we're we're available everywhere. All the links are in the description. We're on SoundCloud, we're on YouTube, and we're definitely uh, in the Twitterverse. So feel free to this up. So I'm not going to do the Baker X. I'm just going to say see you later. Yeah. Take it easy. Unless you live in a little town called Cut and Shoot, Texas. You can fuck off, sir or ma'am. <laughs>